we are going to be installing a cash acne tank booster on our 50 gallon natural gas water heater. We're going to install that today, but before we do, we want to measure how much hot water we're getting before we install the tank booster. So right here is a thermostatic mixing valve. Just above it is a uh, dial gauge that's going to be reading the temperature. Um, but the idea now is instead of the normal 120 degrees in our hot water tank, we're going to turn it up to 150 degrees. But what gets delivered out to us in the house is still only going to be 120 degrees, but it's going to be 150 degrees in the hot water tank. And for it to cool it down to the 120 degrees, see this line right here that's teed in on the cold water side coming into the mixing valve? It's got to draw some cold water to cool it down. So what it's going to do is at the end result, it's going to deliver more hot water out at our fixtures because it has to use cold water to cool it down and not use as much of the hot water that's in the tank. So we're going to measure the actual results today and actually see um, what we get. So we're going to do that by uh, measuring how much water that we get out of a normal shower. And I tested it yesterday. I took a shower and I grabbed a the thermometer. While I was in the shower, at a comfortable temperature, I brought the thermometer up to the shower head and I read the temperature and it was 107 degrees. So what we're going to do is we're going to start pull, pulling 107 degree water out of the shower, filling up buckets, and keeping a tally on the, on the amount of 5 gallon buckets that we pull out. Um, then we'll know how, many, how much 107 degree water uh, we actually pull out, pull out of the hot water tank before it goes cold. In about 19 minutes and 20 seconds, we comfortably got 30 gallons of probably average temp of that test was about 107 degrees. Okay. Our goal is by installing the tank booster to hopefully turn this into two 20 minute showers. And I want to get more like 60 gallons. What I really want to do is double the amount of time. Um, we can comfortably take a shower. So that will get us that uh, second or third shower if we had a uh, family over and we needed multiple showers in a row. Okay, uh, let's go downstairs and install the tank booster. First thing that we need to do is we need to turn off the gas to the water heater and we need to turn off the water supply to the house. Then we're gonna drain everything, make sure that we don't have any spillage at us, and then we can safely take off the flex connectors and install our components. Turn off the gas. Quarter turn. Every hot water tank on the cold water or on the cold water supply will have a shutoff valve. So we need to find that shutoff valve and turn it off. And here it is, right back here. Okay, so righty tighty, lefty loosey. So all the way right, which would be clockwise, with my fingers here, uh, turns it off. So it's all all the way off, nice and tight. Okay. Now that we have the water off the tank, let's just for um, precaution, let's turn off the water to the entire house. This house is in the city and we have a meter. So there's no whole house shutoff valve in the garage or available to us. The way we turn off the water supply here to this house is we uh, finding the water meter and turn it off. I've already located it right out here. This is a meter box, dual meter. Here's the neighbor's meter. And then here's the meter to the house. And there's always going to be this corp stop type valve right here. And the way I like to tell homeowners is to make sure that it's off is act like you're the city and the person hasn't paid their bill and you're coming to lock them out. Okay, so I'm going to match those two holes right there. And pretend that I can put a lock on there until they pay their bill. And I'll come take the lock back off. So I know that the water is off right now. Tools we need to accomplish this task. Two pairs of channel locks, dope and Teflon. We need a screwdriver. And some rounds. The water's off, so it could still spill out of us, so we want to relieve the pressure to the house. And some ways we can do that 
is by turning the TNP on right now. So that'll relieve the pressure out here. Another way we can do that is we go into the house, turn on the hot, and turn on the cold. What we're going to do right now is take off the flex connector on both the hot water side and the cold water side. That way, I like to wiggle it. Just as a precaution to make sure in case there was any pressure on it, it's not going to come. It'd be spraying out right now. Nice and dry. Okay. That out of our way for now. I'll come over here and do the same thing on the cold water supply. I like to wiggle it just to make sure nothing goes. It's going to spray. It's going to spray now before I get that nut all the way off. Connections of the mixing valve and how we're going to connect them on the hot water tank. <clears throat> or, uh, zoom in here. So. Here is act, the actual mixing valve. This is where the mixing hap is happening in. The hot water comes in here from the hot water side on top of the tank. This is a ball check, right? And the cold water comes in here, part of the mix into the mixing valve, also through a ball check. And the reason why they have the built-in check valves is here is where the cold water can't come back into the hot water, directly into the hot water tank, it would stop right there. And the hot water can't go back into the cold water supply of the house and system it would get stopped right there that ball would it put pressure against that ball and it would go no, no further so water in water through water in um, but nothing can come back not because of those check valves to protect those check valves from any kind of debris and keep them clean um, these connections are going to be sealed with these rubber washers that have a built-in uh, inlet screen there they can be cleaned out later so the Teflon you always want to put on clockwise. I like to take my hold it out there and kind of take my finger and wrap it around. That way I can just bring my tape over. It looks nice and smooth like that, and you will not have a leak. Start with sticking it down. And if you can walk the tape around, it'd be nice. Take my finger. Push it through there, bring the tape around. That honestly is probably the most important thing in this whole process right here um, for you not to have leaks. About three or four wraps of good quality Teflon and, and, and applied smooth like that. Then we're going to put a little bit of lubricant on here just to help things uh, spread on nice. Doesn't take much. Remember the Teflon is the most important part. It's just lubricant. Now this one I'm not going to use a backup on because um, this is threaded well into the tank. This one I am going to use a back on, backup on because I don't want to turn this T at all and break any kind of seal that's already been here. Okay, those are nice and tight. All right. so now we want our inlet screen right there. We're gonna put just a little bit of dope on it, just for lubricant. And this rubber gasket. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna kind of leave that just a little bit loose for right now, and then uh, we'll come back and cinch up these gasket fittings. There you go, we'll put a little bit of dope. No screen required here. This is just a gasket connection. Okay, now, because the flex connector they sent us is kind of small, that's why I left these connections loose so this can swivel. I want to install the the cold water flex connector over here and then that'll tell us where things need that final resting place. Okay. This doesn't take a lot. You don't have to crank this on. That's gonna be money right there. Go ahead and tighten these up. Okay, hot water flex connector. Done. Nice and tight. Okay, um, now we have all of our plumbing complete. We have the mixing valve on, all the flex connectors. Now it's time to turn the water back on. Okay, we are all the way on there. Turn the water onto the tank now. When you build that pressure, you can hear it. We finally filled up the entire system. We have plenty of pressure. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and turn this valve all the way on. Look at this, the, uh, the temperature is actually already at 120 degrees because we never did drain the tank. So the hot water stayed inside the tank as we've had it off. So that's good. So this is a Honeywell gas control valve. And you put it in the pilot and you push this in to send gas down the pilot tube. Let's turn the gas on. So you push this in, send gas down there, and then here's your striker. Actually, you heard it light. But you hold it for another minute, even after it's lit. Tie the button here. So that starts flashing. That means the thermocouple is uh, expanded. It's sending the signal here, so we can let that go. We still got the flash. Thermocouple is good. Now we can go ahead and set it. You can hear it light, and we're going to go ahead and leave this baby on C. So 120, 130, 140, 150. So we'll check it later tonight or in the morning for our temperature, and we'll see what we got. Okay, we are back for our final results video. We've installed the tank booster on our 50-gallon water heater. We've turned it up to 150 degrees. We've installed the mixing valve. We made sure that it's delivering 120 degrees off the top of the tank. So this is our pre-tank booster results before the tank booster. We were able to draw out six five gallon buckets at 107 degrees. We made a few adjustments on the shower valve to try to maintain 107 degrees. Um, and we'll do that same thing. We didn't chase it. We didn't go all the way hot on it, but we legitimately got a 30 gallon, six times five, we legitimately got 30 gallons. We got nine, it took 19 minutes and 20 seconds at 107 degrees. And then let's see how much water we get at 107 degrees. <laughs> And this 
Let's call it. Let's call it. Let's call it. We'll call it 40 minutes. So there you have it. There you have it. Install the uh, install a thermostatic mixing valve on your 50 gallon water heater and double your amount of hot water. We truly got a solid 107, 60 gallons. 60 gallons. Yeah, put the timer on it. And pretty much 40 minutes. And of course at 107 degrees. 100% improvement.